Hi everyone, this is Alice from The Alice Edit. Um, as requested today, we will be doing a video on my Hermes journey. Of course, a disclaimer, this is just my experience. It's not indicative of other people's experiences or maybe what you will experience. So a little bit of context for people who aren't familiar with this concept. Hermes is very well known for their bags, specifically the Birkin or the Kelly. Um, and also the constants now. But because they're so limited, they are very hard to come by. You can't just walk into a store and get a bag. What you have to do is establish a relationship with a brand and sales associate, and then be offered a bag. There's lots of videos on YouTube and lots of resources online on this, so I won't go into that. Today I'm going to do a casual video on um, how I explored the brand and the purchases leading up to the Birkin. You're going to see me um, referencing my notebook here, that's because I do log my purchases, um, so if you see me looking down, that's what that is. A little bit of background before I jump into listing all the purchases, I live in New York City, um, the boutique that I've been going to is the Wall Street Boutique downtown. Um, it's a much smaller one, but I know lots of people in New York City go to, say, um, Madison, the flagship store, which is probably the store that's going to have a lot more stock. I also um, went on this journey during the pandemic, so of course that changes things as well with um, all of the restrictions, with supply chain issues and shipping and stock um, and also the rise in demand um, so you might see that reflected here as well. I went into um, Hermes knowing that they do offer bags um, but I started with the mindset of I am going to only buy things that I like and not have expectations for a bag and that getting a bag may be something that will take years for me and I'm gonna go slow. So my first purchase came in late 2020 and that purchase is a silk scarf, this particular one. Um, as we go, I'll put like prices on the screen of how much I purchased it for. Um, so this was my first time actually shopping in a Hermes boutique as opposed to just like looking. And I knew I wanted a silk scarf and I wanted something that was classic um, that I could wear over and over again. Um, so this is what I got. This is a 90 by 90 centimeter scarf. I do use a scarf. Uh, I wouldn't say a lot also because I don't tend to accessorize as much. Um, but I did get some use out of the scarf. Um, and to be honest, for silk scarves from Hermes, I ended up using them more as wall art. Basically, I use magnets so that I don't have to nail anything um, and it doesn't damage the scarf and I can change it out whenever I want. This was with the first essay that I've ever worked with and this is pretty much the only time that I've seen this essay. And the next purchase came in 2021. And this was with a different essay. There wasn't a clear reason why I switched, like I thought we got along fine, but um, I kind of just went into the boutique and I wasn't thinking of, oh, um, who I should reach out to. Still very new to the journey. And the next item is also a silk scarf. This is, again, another 90 by 90 centimeters. It was adorable. I remember seeing the scarf when I got the first one and it just made me smile. It's not something that like I would wear very often, but it's so cute. It's got like tiny little um, horses um, and it's by a artist who is known for very whimsical art like this. So I ended up getting this as wall art for the apartment that I just moved into. Both of these scarves with tax was $457 each. During those two first visits, I was very casual, just looking around. I told the essay that I'm very new to the brand. Um, I didn't know very much, um, so it was really just there to listen. I did not mention handbags at all. In fact, I don't think I really looked at them. I kind of glanced at the ones that they had on the shelf, but didn't actually ask about them. 
But the next time I went into the boutique, this is probably like one or two months after, um, I ended up purchasing the Bastia coin purse in Blue Brune in um, Goatskin or Chev Mysore, I think. Um, very cute. I actually wanted a red <laughs> one, but they didn't have it, those colors in stock. I wanted a red one because it was around the time of the Lunar New Year and I thought it would be cute to have a little red envelope, but this was a really pretty color. A very popular accessible item. And as a coin purse, it's probably great, except I don't use coins nowadays, so I can't use this as a coin purse. Um, I do put earphones in here and also I have a Lucky Charm in here right now as well. I also bought um, a Twilly. This is the Collier de Chêne, the dog collar Twilly. It's two-sided. Um, really, really adorable. To be honest, I wish I got a second one so that I could wrap it on my Birkin now and it would match. I just thought this was really cute. And I'm not someone who really accessorizes that much. And to be honest, I don't think I used this very much until I got the Birkin. I tried it in my hair, which was really cute. I used it um, to tie a ponytail. Um, as a neck scarf, I think I maybe did that once. I did tie it as a belt or on my um, jeans, just like a ribbon. That was really cute as well. I could do a whole separate video on how I style the Hermes scarves that I have, um, so if you're interested, let me know. In that same purchase, I also got a um, pop-up book from Hermes. This is probably like the cheapest thing that you could get, but this is pretty cool too. It's got some of their iconic scarves, and I do really appreciate the art um, that comes with their scarves and the different prints. And it's just kind of a whimsical, I think, coffee table book. Um, I thought about giving this to my nieces, but to be honest, I think they're a little bit young for this. This is really meant for adults. So during this visit, um, I did talk work with the same essay that helped me get the pink scarf. Um, and we also looked at bags and I asked about handbags. We talked about availability of a Birkin and she basically said they are very very tight on stock um, in general not just for bags um, because of the pandemic and she recommended getting a bigger size because everybody wants a Birkin 25 or maybe a Birkin 30 um, especially the 25 is really hot right now so getting it is impossible. She also recommended certain colors, um, basically not black, not gold, which is the brown shade from Hermes. So things that are not neutral or not super popular um, is more likely to be available. During this visit, I didn't specify that I'm looking for a Birkin. I just casually asked. Okay, before I go on to the next purchase, I would say this is the point where I started to want the bag more and feel like maybe it was attainable within the span of a year as opposed to over a few years. And I started to get a little bit more expectation of getting a bag at the end of this journey or at some point. So I did start thinking about my purchases a little bit differently as opposed to really only getting the things I definitely will get without the expectation of the bag. I think um, if I'm being honest with myself, I am starting to buy certain things because I like them, but also because they get me closer to a bag. The next purchase that I made um, was actually for Father's Day. I purchased the Technical Polo. I think it's called the Double Jou Polo in like a darker blue and red trim um, and I sent it over to my dad. I actually didn't end up purchasing this with the essay that I work with. I texted her um, with that particular product and didn't get a response. And to be honest, it's probably because they didn't have it in that boutique. And because I was on a timeline to get that sent to my dad, I ended up going to the men's store um, right across from the Madison flagship store and um, bought that polo just with another essay. This was in May. 
Now fast forward to June, I ended up going to the boutique again and my mindset was buy things that you like but also if possible diversify. Around this time, I was starting to become a little bit obsessive and I, I noted this down in my journal and that was a little bit concerning. I would look at the website very often to figure out what I want to get, um, especially from the different categories. And sometimes I did struggle to find things that I would be interested in, but I eventually made it to the boutique in June. During that visit, I ordered a silk scarf. This was something that I saw from the website and they didn't have that in stock. I don't think my essay knew of the style when I showed it to her. Um, but this is a 140 by 140 centimeter wash scarf in this cheetah art. Now I will say of all the Hermes purchases, this is probably my top item. Maybe with the bag as well. Um, I didn't think that it would be super useful, but because it is neutral um, and it's really big, I've worn this as obviously a scarf. Um, it works as a shawl, like if I'm in the office and it's a little bit chilly, but this is the summer, this would be perfect for that. And my favorite way to wear this was a halter dress, which was great in the summer because it felt very airy, it felt very casual and it was very sheer, but because of the busy print, um, nothing showed through. So this is probably one of my most used item in my Hermes collection. I also purchased a blanket. This was um, actually a better fit for me than getting an Avalon blanket. I don't think that H logo aesthetic really fits me. And this is much more low key and goes with my color palette. It was also priced a little lower than the Avalon blanket. I didn't know this when I got it, but I'm glad it was. Um, I will say I haven't had this for that long, um, but my concern is that it's going to start pilling because I know that's what a lot of people say it does over time. And it's just something that happens. I don't really mind. It is very warm and very comfortable. Um, for several months, it was only decoration on the couch. But now that um, winter is here, I've been using it on my bed, on the couch, so it's been quite versatile. And that same visit, I also purchased the Khagit scarf ring. I've misplaced it, but I'll show a picture on the screen. It's that uh, same Shandong design, and it's just a simple gold scarf ring. I did really enjoy using that item, because one of the problems that I had with um, the 90 by 90 silk scarves is that it's so slippy, sometimes it would just slip out of place. So having a scarf ring to hold things in place was really helpful for me and also gives me peace of mind. During this purchase, I also brought up the Birkin again with my essay and I told her that I want to add it to my wish list. She said she remembered the conversation that we had earlier. She asked me to text her what exactly I was looking for. So I did, um, and this is what I said. For the Birkin 30 on my wish list, I thought about the colors I would like, and then in order of preference, grays, dusty, pastels, blue-greens, whites, and navy. I would prefer gold or rose gold hardware, but open to palladium. I think I would like a softer pebbled leather, but open to other leather options as well. And I specifically wanted not black bags because I have a lot of black bags already. I wear a lot of black. All my, most of my shoes are black. I wanted to have something still neutral, but a little bit different. And in my head, something that's gray, green, blue tends to flatter me. And I think gold is a really good option as well. And as you can tell, my criteria is very flexible. And I think that helped that I wasn't looking for black or gold and that I was open to different colors and leathers. So at this point, I'm just like, I put it out there in the universe. I need to slow down because I realized I was 
thinking about this a lot. I still wanted to go into the boutique because at the end of the day, it is quite a enjoyable experience. You make an appointment um, so you don't have to wait around. My essay is very nice. The store was never crowded and it's quite playful because she would show me how to tie scarves, um, how to play around with the bracelets and things like that. Then in early July, the scarf that I ordered arrived in the store. So instead of sending it home, I sent it to the store. So I have an excuse to go in. Um, so I went to the store to pick it up and I received my first Birkin offer. She said she had maybe a lighter blue color and she wanted to see if it's actually in stock. So she went back, um, but they came back and said that the Birkin 30 in blue had silver hardware. And then she misremembered the shade. So it was actually a bright blue color rather than a light blue. So the combination of a bright blue with silver hardware really wasn't my thing. Um, so I said, I can wait um, for something that is more suitable. And then she went back again and said that she might have something else because we were talking about bag sizes and she was saying that oh, you should try and be open to a 35 as well because it's a practical size. And I didn't have a good sense of what a 35 looked like, but there was a garden party that was a 35. And to be honest, it's not that much bigger. Um, I think it would be great for things like work or travel or an overnight bag. It wouldn't be something that I would carry every day, um, but I still think it's quite functional as a size. So after trying on the garden party and looking at that against um, my frame, I thought it was reasonable. And if it came in the right color combinations, I would be open to it. So she went to the back and got a um, black Birkin 35 in Togo leather and gold hardware, which is such a classic combination and I tried it out. It was very convincing because it was black and gold, very practical, but at the end of the day, my heart really desires something that is not black. <laughs> the size 35 didn't actually bother me. What bothered me was the color. So I turned that down because it wasn't the right color, and that was an area that I didn't compromise on as much, but everything else was good. The hardware was great, the leather was great, the size was fine, but I just decided to wait. And then a week and a half-ish later, I received a text from my essay, and she said that something came in that I want you to come see. And immediately I was like, I'll be there later today. Um, it helps that I actually pretty close to the boutique. So I stopped by that same day and that was when she brought out um, this bag, the Birkin 30 and um, gray green and Epsom leather and gold hardware. Um, she said it was from actually the Madison boutique. Um, somebody had looked at this and then decided not to go with it. So I was very lucky in other words. So I came in, I looked at it, I decided to take it. Um, I also looked around the store to see if there were other things that I wanted. So I picked out a couple of twillies. Um, so this was after I decided to get the bag. I ended up going with a pair of navy blue and gold ones. They didn't have that many options in the boutique because stock was low, um, but this seemed to go pretty well and it wasn't too busy of a print. I got a pair because I knew I wanted both handles wrapped. I also ended up getting a fragrance. In a previous visit, she gave me samples of a few different fragrances and I had the chance to try them on, smell them on me. Um, and the one that really stood out, which I think I would have got eventually anyway, was Iris Ukinoe. This is kind of like a floral light scent. I'm not very good with describing scents, but I do encourage you to try it if you ever get the chance to. It's part of the Hermesance line, um, 
and originally I wanted the travel size. This is the full size bottle. I wanted the travel size, but they didn't have that in stock because of course nothing is in stock, but they did have the full size. So I ended up getting this and I do wear this quite often. My signature scent and profile tends to be on like the lighter, fresher, more florally aquatic type of scents. Um, so this fit that pretty well. So if you add up all of the prices, excluding tax, up to the point of the Birkin offer of this particular bag, it adds up to $4,360. It is a lot of money, but at the same time, if you compare that with the price of a Birkin, which was $10,800 at the time I bought this, you're looking at a little over 40%. So as many of you know, there is a belief out there that you need to spend a ratio of one to one to get the bag, meaning the price of the bag you should spend on other things to be offered a bag. Um, clearly that wasn't the case for me and I can't verify or deny that tactic. Though I will say going in, I did have an expectation that I would probably need to spend around the price of the bag to be offered one to mentally prepare myself. For my particular case, I think I was just lucky. This was a bag that somebody else didn't want and to be honest, a lot of people wouldn't think of asking for a green or like a gray green. Um, I don't think that's a particularly popular color or at least people don't think about it. I also think it was because I had more interactions with my essay. I didn't go in every day or anything like that, but it was um, like once a month, once every three week-ish, which was pretty often for me. So she was thinking about uh, my wish list and actively looking for that. If you're going on an Irma's journey and you wanted me to give you a recommendation of what to get and what to try. I think the standout product for me is the 140 wash silk scarf. I just never thought this could be so versatile and I thought it was going to be quite awkward to use because it was so large and voluminous but also very lightweight and not very warm for the winter. But I ended up using this way more than any of my other scarves including the twillies that I keep on my bag. Okay, that's it for today's video. I hope you found this helpful. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments and I'll make sure to answer them to the best of my ability. Also, tell me what you think about this whole concept of an Irma's journey. Do you think it's ludicrous? Do you think it's made up? Are you on an Irma's journey yourself and what are the things that you're running into? I would love to hear. I don't think my Irma's journey has ended. Um, after purchasing these items and having interactions with the brand, I have a pretty deep appreciation for their craft, the attention to detail and quality just in the way they do things from customer service to the products itself. If you want a channel recommendation for learning about Hermes, um, I am GPS, I'll link his channel below, is probably the best resource out there. If you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, please make sure to like and subscribe. It really does help me grow. and also tells me that you like content like this. Thank you for your time and support and I hope you have a great rest of your day. Bye-bye.